the right thing? How about this agenda again? Yep, that's the right thing. I can see the agenda. See, how do I end here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of sharing. You know what I think happened today? I, around noon, there was a press conference with uh, the Metropolitans, John Kerry, and Dina McCarthy. And I just say, I think I think we're all behind the curve. So I would I would say we were too far ahead of everybody. Now I think we're behind the federal government. <laughs> that's, that's oh, Gina's I'm always way out in front. Sorry. Well, that's a little different. Joe? We'll wait, a, we'll wait a few more minutes. See if we get any other attendees. I know Samantha Garnowski from the community won't be attending. Samantha? James, this is your in inaugural secretarial flight, at least with this commission. I understand you subscribe to other organizations, but. That is correct. You'll be getting notes from the scribe, I'd say. Thank you, James. It's very nice to <laughs> sit back. Both, both hands. No problem. <laughs> Glad I could help. Okay, guys, it's um, it's it's seven oh four. I'll call the call the meeting to order. No discussion. Always, people will will come in. This is, a, of course, a virtual meeting because we try not to kill each other by our mere presence. Um, we're following Governor Lamont's order number seven B. Um, I think right now we're all commissioners, but if we get community members. Um, we'll ask people to identify themselves every time they speak. And with, with that, let me, um, even though you're all very pleasant to look at, I will, I will share this agenda. And uh, we've called the meeting to order. Um, roll, roll call. We have Joe Campanella. Here. Chris Nelson. Present. We have James Capella. We have Catherine, and he's present even though he didn't say so. Catherine Davini. Here. Max de Boisson. Very colors here. And missing so far anyway are Robert Palmer and David. <coughs> if I left anybody off, please tell me. Um, we sent around. The uh, minutes uh, earlier, can I get a motion to have those approved or any comments on those? I'm motion to approve the meetings, minutes. I'll second that. Wonderful. Any Anybody opposed? Okay. I think those, they are approved for the ages. Under the heading of old business, um, we did get some feedback on the energy plan. We, we talked um, about the town manager's comments. I don't, I think <laughs> I sent a response to him. I'm not sure whether we 
uh, I'll enumerate them. Uh, he was interested in a greenhouse gas inventory tool. And we, there are several that we could provide or, or reference. I'm not sure it's within our scope, but I, I don't mind referencing a tool. He um, suggested that many other areas, like, like recycling materials, handling, um, stormwater runoff, managing impervious surfaces, would be things he would be interested in. We responded that we are interested in those too, but we have a scope to this plan. So I, I guess for your consideration, I suggest that we somewhere in the document, maybe an appendix, reference those things as adjacent to this plan that we're interested in, but, but not actually change our text to include them. I think we do that right up front in, in Max's Perfect. plan, what this is and what this is not. Perfect. I mean, it sounds like he wants a sustainability plan rather than a clean energy plan. He does. And um, and we've got that at the end of the agenda, um, which will, will, under new business, and I think we'll come back to that point. Um, I, I'll just say I, I presented the day after our meeting, I presented to the Conservation and Environment committee which is chaired by matt masunas meeting was well attended we, we got some some comments from people with different perspectives um a couple points i take away from that there was an emphasis on re recite that we perhaps ought to call out the fact that solar panels have an end of life and we would support or encourage that they be recycled at the end of their life and I guess the other point that uh, the Chairman Masunas made was that, and Catherine and Max, maybe we already do this and I just haven't remembered it, uh, we, that we ought to cite something like the International uh, Protocol, the IPCC, or some authoritative document that we can reference as why we are trying to drive down, why we are supporting clean energy and with the intent of driving down greenhouse gas. Um, so I think that could be a, we have a, a number of things that we refer to in our appendix. <clears throat> and I think that would be a good thing to um, in, include. Um, the town manager also said that he thought that the committee chaired by Ben Winograd would be the proper place to send this. Um, I think if we want to, after this meeting, perhaps cross any T's and dot any I's, but I would suggest that we formally hand it over and say your your review period has begun. Um, hope, hopefully he has looked at it uh, in the meantime. Okay. Catherine or anybody, Max, any any anything I missed? Any comments that you would add? Not for me. Okay. Um, moving on, I, I have this um, commission membership status. Uh, by that, I am referring to our desire to um, meet the requirements of town commissions to have a balance of party representation. Stephen Sack, who is um, expressed an interest to be on the commission, is a Republican. He has been in communication with Lee Gold and um, I, I think they're close to saying that he's he's eligible, he's good, that Lee is good to put him on this commission. At the moment, we don't have a, a, a vacancy, but um, as as soon as we do, I, I think we can we should make that make that happen. And uh, I think we had a discussion about with Stephen. I don't know if Stephen is on. I can only see a few of you now, uh, but I think he would make a valuable addition. He has a different perspective. He has an energy background since he's run an energy company. And um, he's, uh, he's pretty outspoken. Um, public art and EV chargers. This is old business. This is an ongoing initiative. Uh, Chuck Corsi of the Arts Commission has been, um, along with Stephanie, 
I don't know how to say her last name, but uh, she's from, she lives in West Hartford and works in Bloomfield. And the basic idea is we would, we would bring together the, the arts and, and, the, and the science, sciences uh, by sort of allowing artists to have free reign, subject to almost free reign to spice up and decorate uh, uh, electric vehicle charging stations. This is actually something that's been done in, in at least one other town, the town of Tacoma, Maryland, which is where patterning this after. Um, we have a proposal almost done. And, uh, I think I think it'd be a wonderful idea. So we have Bloomfield, West Hartford, and Simsbury uh, on this uh, group. So we are crossing town lines. If it gets rolling, it, it's the uh, hope is we can sort of have a pattern that other towns can sign on to. Hey, Bernie, do you have a website that you could share afterwards that kind of uh, gives examples of what they've done in Tacoma, Maryland? I can I can uh, share you that site. I I don't recollect if it has any pictures on it. Oh, okay, but I think it. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm just writing down Tacoma, Maryland. Um, as, as you know, we were really happy last at the last meeting that uh, Mayor Cantor was honored the U.S. Conference of Mayors Climate Protection Award. She was the small town winner for the. And that's that's a pretty big deal. Um, there was a financial award of fifteen thousand dollars, I believe, which could go to a sustainability nonprofit. Yes, so I can just give a brief update on that. Yeah. Uh, we had discussed at our last meeting potential candidates, um, which we brainstormed and passed along. Um, and I know um, people um, were partial to the idea that if we could spend the money to benefit the community um, rather than a statewide organization, that would be best. So the mayor actually um, made his decision and um, the $15,000 is going to go to BC Co. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, which is um, run by the Center for Latino Progress. Um, they did have a West Hartford location and a Hartford location. I think the West Hartford location had to close I don't know whether that's temporary or not right now because of um, COVID, but we had a very nice conversation with Tony Chirolis and Yanil Tehran, um, the executive director of, of BCCO, um, about possible uses for that funding. Um, I think it was a nice fit. Um, BCCO and the Center for Latino Progress, um, we felt are in a better position to uh, spend uh the money then uh bike west hartford at this particular part point in time and um we had a nice conversation with them about how that money can be used to support uh youth bike or um education and some other initiatives which would support both west hartford um and hartford um so it was a good conversation and i think that was a good choice and if you guys don't know Mayor Cantor actually is very passionate about cycling too, so it was a nice fit for her. That's I, yeah. From what I, I know, Tony Carlos and some other folks from the Center for Latino Progress, I think that's a great, a great choice. And uh, and I think they will be partnering uh, with Bike Hartford to spend some of that money as well. Um, yeah. Oh, that's great. That really is great. Um, I. Prior to this meeting, I reached out to Hendry Millwood. He, Millward. He was he was here with three of three students, and talking about climate emergencies. Um, they don't have anything new to report at this point. I think they will be back. So I just that was more or less a placeholder agenda item. I don't know if it happened today, but I think the discussion of declaring a national climate emergency is on the table. Did. Did anybody know? Has that has that happened, or is that just still in discussion? I think he did it today. He he did it today. Well, it was on the news anyway. So speaking for, for myself as somebody who's been hesitant to declare an emergency until I know what to do about the emergency, I guess I feel 
if that's the case, Joe, um, that we've been leapfrogged by the federal government, so. <laughs> which is okay. And it's okay that the, the mayor say it now, I think, you know, if we're supporting our government. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a, that's a, this is a wonderful thing that's happening. I don't know that he's actually done it. I think there's just discussion of it in DC. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, the headlines about Schumer encouraging him to do it. Even even that, Max, I think I mean, that's a, something. <laughs> that's that's something that they're saying out, out loud. So I, I think that's, and you know, my concern about we won't know what to do if we declare an emergency. Um, from what I heard at the press conference this afternoon, it sounds like there's lots of things that they're doing. So I think uh, that idea of declaring an emergency and having a, a suite of activities to respond to that emergency is certainly occurring, I think, at the federal level if they, in fact, have declared that emergency. But do you guys think, I know in the past, um, I mean, if, if the federal do government declares a climate emergency, will the town council of West Hartford feel the need to? I know in the past, like with the plastic bag ban, and there's action at the state level, then the town council did not feel the need to do anything as a town. Um, so I wonder if it, if it, um, if they, they, if if we need to. What what do you guys think about that? I, I think that's a a good point. I would I would. Uh, think that perhaps we could just pass a resolution saying that West Hartford supports this this effort and without having to recreate the resolution. That'd be my two cents. If we have we have enough on here for twelve cents. So if anybody wants to add any more cents. Yeah, I, I would like to see us pass a resolution in support of that. Um, hopefully hopefully um, they would they would agree with that approach rather than saying there's no need for it. So I would still support kind of pushing that agenda forward, even if it's more in support of rather than um, on our own. I actually think that that's what this our, our plan and this is all about is trying to bring the local level closer, support the state and the, and the federal level and initiatives. So. I don't think it's redundant. I think it's race, each of us in our respective spheres of influence try, trying to make action happen. Okay. Um, if I can uh, move on to new business. Um, so in, in the plan, we've, we've got our uh, 2020 to 2021, or maybe, maybe I'm off by a year, but We've got our short-term actions, and I've sort of recapitulated them here. And last time we we all signed up for things. James, I think you missed that meeting, so we assigned something to you. <laughs> the EV event, yeah. That's, that's the trouble with missing a meeting is you just get something assigned. <laughs> Support. Uh, so the first two uh, are more or less us saying as a commission we want to engage with the town council and keep them in the loop. And so I think we're all going to keep the town council in the loop. So that's all commissioners. We'll, have, we'll send updates to the town council and public works, and that, that can be Catherine and, and Bernie. Um, since we're all about the, the community, this next bullet is community communication network. And Joe Campanella, Chris Nelson, Mike Matthews, who's a community member, um, and Chris and Joe are commission members sort of took that one on. Uh, I'm gonna uh, see if I can share again, because uh, Joe, I think you had forwarded on uh, a piece of work that you had done. Um, what, what am I sharing there? Am I sharing the right thing? Yes. Looks like page two. All right, page two. That's it? That's it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that it came so late. Um, I'm grateful that it came at all, Joe. So yeah, I, you know, and the other thing is, uh, just to let everybody know how uncomfortable I am with communications. So, um, this, this isn't my 
bailiwick. I'm really kind of out of my element with all this stuff, but um, I felt like, um, you know, my name was on four of these and they all dealt with communications. I've always been kind of outspoken, but the communication, um, um, or at least our PR, it doesn't seem to go in. So um, I, I just did a, a, a quick outline. Um, we all know our objectives. Those are pulled right out of our um, our plan. Is that me? I am. I think it's anybody that speaks. Um, okay. Maybe. Well, I don't even know how to mute myself when I'm sharing. So, but maybe if others want to mute themselves while Joe is talking, and then go. Bro. So, um, yeah. So, I, I've listed some of the objectives. Um, um, the second paragraph talks about um, what we want to happen, how we want to engage the community. Um, yeah. Then how, how we go about communicating it. I, I guess the, my bottom line is that um, it really would be helpful um, to engage someone um, in, in social media. It seems like that may be a place that we're really lacking but um as far as communications it's it's the way most people communicate now and uh, it it seems like it would be the easiest way to reach most of, of the community or at least begin to um but of course that that's probably going to cost money unless we can get a paid or unpaid intern to do that um so I, I just, um, I welcome everybody to kind of just review this on their own and uh, share with me some thoughts. And uh, I guess the next meeting we can um, have more of a discussion on it or we can discuss it now. Something to add to that maybe is, Catherine, I believe that you have, are you the owner of the sustainable like the clean energy west hartford page on facebook i i think that's chris nelson yeah i'm sorry i was talking but i was muted oh, uh, james i created oh sorry that was you chris i recently uh, made Catherine a moderator so yeah. hopefully uh, she would have ability to to do more stuff with it yeah because perhaps maybe we could get some of the engagement through these efforts through that page i it popped up on my my Facebook feed. I joined the group, Catherine. That's why I was asking if it was you because I believe you added me when when I uh, you know tried to join it. And maybe we could start getting the word out that way. So yeah, you know, through the Joe the mentioned media. Yeah, that was one of Joe's things. So to to date, we haven't done a very we we haven't really figured out how sustainable. West Hartford, um, this kind of virtual Facebook page presence and a group that that Chris and members of the Clean Energy Task Force created in the past, how that fits together with the Clean Energy um, Commission. So I think we should explore that. But just, I mean, we jumped from 219 followers to 235 in just the last week because I think I I sent to the Clean Energy Commission um, Google group to you know to tell people to join so I mean even that that little bump in 15 users <laughs> you know is is great and I think Catherine Bruns has done a great job mm growing West Hartford recycles of a Facebook page she created too. Um, so I, I, I think we can use that as an outreach, but I think we have to think about um, what we post there and how it fits into the, the picture. The other, other thing I would like to do is um, 
you know, I don't know why the town doesn't have a Facebook page. I know Public Works has a Twitter account. Um, I don't, you, you know, I don't know what kind of Twitter accounts there are within the town network. But from my perspective, I would think it's easier to latch on to existing Facebook pages rather than create something new. Because as Joe mentions in this document, you know, there are groups out there like Friends, Neighbors and Friends, West Hartford Neighbors and Friends, which already have 20,000 followers. <laughs> so, so, you know, if we have something really important, we want a lot of eyes to see that's the place to go. You know, a, t a communication within the town probably holds more weight than posting on Sustainable West Hartford right now. Yeah. I'll make a, a couple comments too. Um, I, I, I like the suggestion that Joe and company have made here to invite your friends. And essentially that's in a way, that's what you did, Catherine, with your friends on the Google group. Yeah, but we need to like network it out, you know? That's cer certainly the case. I do think Neighbors and Friends is a good place to put stuff on. However, things go, for, if you've ever used it, uh, we put stuff out there and it, the traffic is so high that if you're not looking at it at that moment, whoosh, it, it, it's, it's gone. So I'm not saying not to use it, um, but I think, it's, I think we should have our own thing. I would like to just continue to build on the work because I think if we were to start something new, unless we had a real push behind it or some some real attractive aspect to it i think it's better to start with the 235 stalwart citizens that we have and try to, to try to build on that i have something to say yes please catherine um i have noticed that twitter is a great way to disseminate information because the town manager has a twitter account and the mayor has a twitter account and Weha.com, which is Ronnie Newton, has a Twitter account, and so sort of the influencers in town are there to immediately share with their people. So Twitter is something, a way you could feed information to those people who then feed it within their network group. So that's a, is, do I hear you that that's a two-step process, that if we could get, say, um, Mr. Phillips uh, to follow us and he could promulgate it through his network. Is that yeah. well, or if you, if you were to pick taking on a Facebook page is a, I feel like it's a big thing. It's super visual, but a Twitter, either you somehow got information to those people that you want them to share on Twitter or you, someone has a Twitter account and just shares it with those people. I don't know who in this group has a Twitter account. I have but, one, but, but I have no idea what to do with it. I've tweeted yeah. <laughs> several yeah, times. Yeah, me too. Me too, Bernie. That's a great job for our uh, new youth representative when we get one. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. I very much. I'm glad you said that, Catherine, because I was going to go there too. But to your point, Catherine, that once you asked uh, your uh, the Land Energy Commission to share stuff, then suddenly, you know, it, there was an uptick in people who saw information. Hmm. Yeah. But I also think <laughs> it's an old fashioned route for sure that there needs to be, you know, the getting things out through Renee with the town mailers and, you know, people get things that old fashioned. There's a lot of people who are not on social media or not on any sort of, you know, so you got to be able to reach everybody. Social media is only a piece of it. Yeah. Maybe that, that's a good idea, though, to get someone prominent to, to tweet mm -hmm. our page. If they can tweet our page, I, that's better than having them follow our page. You, you're absolutely right. So a great idea, I think. And do we know, I mean, I, I know that the Clean Energy Commission has been sharing a lot of information you know, related to our commission over the years, but are there other environmental commissions like the Conservation Commission? I don't know if they have any people on uh, Sustainable West Hartford. Maybe, you know, we could let them know that this is a vehicle for them to, to use as well to share information coming out of their commission um, and get more public engagement. So uh, I don't I don't know if Matt's on Facebook, um, but we could check with him and maybe he could get word out uh, to his commissioners. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so the, the, the one issue with sustainable West Hartford is I feel like when I share West Hartford recycles information there is I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. So how we use that as a jumping off point then to disseminate into the community because people who are actively liking and participating in sustainable West Hartford, you know, might have other means of getting this information as well. So how do we use sustainable West Hartford as a jumping off point? to then have people share it within their networks. That's key. Yeah. Yes. Well, Kat, Catherine, do you post also on Friends and Neighbors when you do postings? Yeah, but I I, uh, I do. And then, then there's definitely an uptick to Catherine's point of the 20,000 followers, yeah. but there's a guard, there's a guardrail there, which is a, the person who moderates it. And she doesn't put everything that I ask her to on there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I most they do. And then another group, which was, I think, by nothing West Hartford, the moderator said, could you please stop sharing on our page? So they said it's not in the spirit of by nothing West Hartford. So I try to, if I share there, you know, I'm careful. I don't think I overshare, but. And just an FYI, I cannot, am I muted? No, you can, we can hear you. Oh, okay, sorry. I didn't see the little blue circle. Um, I'm not a West Hartford resident, so I can't share on um, friends and neighbors. So one well, of you not guys have to well, I think they'd approve you if you say you work for the town. I don't want to be approved. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I get enough from Simsbury Neighbors Unite. <laughs> I can, Catherine. I can share on neighbors and friends, so I can be that person. I got to draw the line somewhere, Chris. Right. Yeah, if you want to mix it up, I'll I'll share something. I can do I can figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you guys decide what's Im important, you know? I'm putting you down on this page. This is this is really good. Okay. Can you blog out of Simsbury, Catherine? Can you blog? Out of Simsbury? Uh, I, <laughs> I had you down to, as to start a blog. You don't want to do that? No. <laughs> okay. Um, well, on, on that front, Joe, uh, back in the Solarize day, we did have a little blog. I'm not sure that it did anything. We It was in the patch, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I don't know if that's worth it or, or not. Um, one thing I did. Rocky it's a lot of work too. Is, is very open to content and willing to share. She's very on board with all of this. So I think if people write things, she will put it out there on weha.com or Patch. Yeah, and that's a great way of getting information out. There's also um, next door, and so I think that in uh, the West Hartford residents here who are members of whether you're West Next Door Morley or Next Door Bugby, that's another way to share yeah. information. Those are neighborhood networks that are separate from Facebook. You know, though, for that one, Catherine, I'm connected to, I think, my neighborhood one. But, like, I get the, the little email blur, but then when I go to click on it, I have to log in. And yeah. I, I, quite honestly, I don't even know what my login is anymore, so I never really see the stories. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that from my phone doesn't remember the login, but my laptop does, and so I can immediately get there. And there's actually quite a lot that goes on there. Someone in my running group said she gets more information from that than Facebook, but. Um, Catherine, I, and I think it's on here somewhere. I, maybe I just can't find it. it. Would it be worth having Renee McHugh? Um, either, I, I don't want to have her dial in at seven o'clock at, at night, but is there a way we could meet with her and just get her, her thoughts on what she's willing to do for us? Sure, I, I can, I mean, reach out to her. All right. I can, um, I'll make a note. It's, it's great that we have two Catherines. Um, yeah, it, so it makes all of our meetings so convenient. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Renee is willing to do things. She, she does stuff all the time, but, you know, keep in mind, we're not her only customer. You know, she's, yeah. she's doing general town stuff and, and, um, it, it, yeah. So, and I think there's some degree of selectivity in in you know competing for attention. But 
Um, yeah. So, uh, but but she's she's always willing to put things in her letter. I wish the town had kind of uh, more social media uh, going on. Just general town, not you know Matt Hart. Um, but but I, I don't even think you know on the town website, right? Isn't there a, like some links, but they don't work, or the page is not active? I can't remember. I'll look. Yeah. She, the town tweets and the town's on Instagram. I know that, but I don't know who's behind it. That must be Renee. Renee or someone. In it's gotta be Renee, uh, it, unless Jen Evans knows, but she's in the background here. I'm not sure she's gonna pipe in. <laughs> um, revealing my age, which is not a secret. Uh, well, Instagram, is that? Is that like Facebook, or does that is anybody here on it? Is that? It's mostly photo kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, there can be a lot of narrative and a lot and links to website. You can always link things. So the people who are very clever at it, I think it is a powerful medium. But okay. it's Maybe not the that's... most effective one for West Hartford Recycles. The most effective for me is Facebook and Twitter. Let me just say, when we get youth representatives, how about we look at investigate Instagram? Unless it's, is it a bad place to send young people? I guess they're already there, right? No. Oh, no. It's Most just... young people are on Snapchat. Hey, my parents are on Snapchat, Catherine. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm way, I'm in pretty deeply over my head at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important for us to realize too, maybe we we can't maintain all of this. So, you know, if we're gonna maintain something, we have to pick and choose and then latch on to some other, yeah. other channels as well. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good point. Let's see if we can get the stuff we have, like sustain. Let's see if we can add some choir members to the sustainable CT page which has been around for a long time and there's some heavy hitters on that i mean there's some elected elected officials or former elected officials who are on there so it's if if we if we reach them and become active maybe that will lead something i i'll just pitch one more thing joe uh, has mailers up here they you, you'll recall that Years ago, we had the Bright Ideas grant, several thousand dollars. We could work with utilities to co-brand. There was a year, I think maybe it was 2016, when we had five or six activities that were on a nice piece of paper. We had, um, it was funded by Eversource. I, something like that is in the works again. So we might have some ability to do mailers. Not, not, not quite yet, but I think that the community, they're calling it the community engagement platform. And if that comes to pass, uh, we might have to co-brand with the utilities, but I don't think that's a bad a bad thing. So speaking I, of mailers, something that I've always th thought we should do is um, the tax insert that goes out with the tax bills. If we have something important and ready to go like a t an initiative or a campaign that's active at the time that, or that the tax mailer goes out we can piggyback off something like that um so you know some of these other initiatives we're working on if we can get the timing to work out and keep in mind that tax cert is finalized well ahead of the mailing that goes out um, but you know, if, if we're doing some kind of partnership on Hona Energy audits, or you know, for example, our Solarize campaign, or something like that, um, I, I think that's a way to reach a whole bunch of people for free. Yeah. Um, but we can't. I mean, obviously, it would have to be <laughs> short, um, but it it would grab some attention. Is, do, we have, do we have any money? as as a commission I, I know when we started this chris you probably remember that we the, the thought was that 
we'd be saving the town so much money that there'd be a little bit kicked back towards the task force. And I, I don't know that that ever happened. Um, I, what I'm thinking about is it, it would be nice to have, um, you know, someone really knowledgeable kind of do this on a part-time basis um, because it, it does take a lot of energy. Um, and whether there's anything we can do to a program that we could fold into sustainable Connecticut, in other words, come up with half the cash and, and write, you know, get a grant from them to, to fund um, it, this outreach, which, you know, f frankly, if we threw some money at it, it would probably work a lot better. Joe, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm working with Brantford, and they have two um, HES installers, uh, NECS and CMC. Right. And um, th those HES installers uh, prov essentially provided marketing money to the our, our equivalent, the equivalent of the Clean Energy Commission down in Brantford. The, uh, the commission itself uh, kicked in some of their personal money and and sustainable ct um, doubled it and it's I, I can tell you they are approaching uh 300 uh hess uh audit signups in a town that's maybe a third our size so it, it to your point it does it does work um so i i think that's what i'd like to do if we can yeah when can we get started here bernie using their model yeah, yeah. Um, on that on that front, it's a little farther down on our agenda. Okay, can I just say, so Joe, we don't have any money. Um, if we wanted a little bit, I, I don't think that uh, the town is going to give any money towards um, staff. But, you know, if, if we need a little money, like they always contribute for our booth at Celebrate West Hartford, or if we yeah. wanted to do some kind of small mailer thing i i could have a conversation okay. um in the past uh the clean energy commission went after a, a grant i forget what it was um but it took us years to spend down that money it was like three thousand or five thousand dollars for marketing which you guys had in the bank um before i started um so that was your money and it was set aside for whatever you guys want to do. So the commission could go for another grant or do something like Bernie's talking about, um, which is program related and partner with contractors and sustainable Connecticut. Where did we get that grant from? I can't remember. I can, Chris, do you remember? I can look it up. I don't have it off the top of my head. I, I don't recall. It was, it was some kind of clean energy grant that we were awarded and we were able to kind of put it aside and use for outreach. I think we we might have paid for our banners and uh, some of that kind of yeah. stuff as well from that money. Yes, you did. Yeah, it might have. We paid, been we paid for the light bulbs that we gave away at events. Yeah. Good. So this is a good this is a good start. Can. I'm going to go back to the uh, the agenda here. And hey, Mike, I know I see Mike Matthews out there. If you have any, don't feel like you have to wait till the public comment section. If you have anything you want to throw in there. No, the, the I only, I, I'll, I'll probably jump off here in a minute uh, now that we have just a real quick pause. Just a quick apology to you, Catherine, actually. Uh, after our initial discussion about revamping the website, uh, everything has really kind of gone crazy on, on my end. So I owe that to you and uh, appreciative to Joe for sending over this great kind of outreach outline. I will look it over and, uh, you know, send a couple possible suggestions and, and see if I can help out with that as well. So that's all I have. Thanks. Am I, am I back to the agenda? Is that what you're seeing now? Yes. 
All right. Yeah. Well, that was actually right on, right on, right on cue. That was the Town Energy webpage. I, I think we should. That's an asset that we should expand our use of. Youth representation. Um, prob. I, you know, Catherine. I think it may be possible. Even even the students that Henry Millward brought. Um, I think we. It would be great to have a couple of them. So. And I think. It's not too late. We're, we're just starting the, the second half of the school year. And virtual is probably better than than in person. So. Well, we we had this discussion on youth representation with Essie. Um, we do not need to officially change our resolution. Um, she said she told us, Bernie, I forget whether this was an in a conversation I had or or an email between the three of us. Um, she said um, other commissions in the past have informally invited, so so they're not official commissioners. So if we want to, I guess there are two paths. If we don't want to get involved in, in a resolution and changing our official structure to an include an official youth commissioner, um, then we can just decide how we're going to invite youth representatives, whether we want to ask each high school to send someone um, and then figure out who and how long that person gets sent. Um, we can send that invite out to both high schools. I can send it to the principals or the science heads or whomever we think would be uh, best suited to that. Um, or there's the more formal route. We can we can say no. We really feel like we want an official youth commissioner, um, and then we'll have to look at changing our resolution. And if we're going that route, then I think we should also consider any additional changes we want to make to our structure and 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 scope and stuff like that. Because if we're doing a new resolution, we might as well get it all done at the same time. <laughs> I'll make a, a a motion, I guess, if you want to call it that. That we go the informal route to see how it works, and then if we feel the the need or or perceive a value in solidifying that, that we look at our charter and and our res our enabling resolution, and as you said, add that in as well as any other things that need to be changed. So I, 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 the sooner we start, I think the the better. Okay. Uh, but I second uh, that motion. Aye. All right. Aye. <laughs> okay, so I will, um, uh, since I'm the lead on this, I'll take a step <coughs> stab at drafting something um, and I'll, we'll send it around for commissioner editing and then um, just ship it off to the high schools. Do you think we would have more success with the, um, well, I'll, I'll check with, um, Bob Palmer and see whether it, we think we'd get more traction going through the principals or going through the science department heads. Do you guys think it should be one? So again, we're looking for youth representation from the town. The town obviously has public high schools, <laughs> but there are also a bunch of private high schools and there are probably, you know, other youth in West Hartford who don't attend Hall or Connard, but um, to keep it easy, um, do you think we should have invite one representative from each public high school? That makes sense to me. Um, you know, I, I think you could extend the invite to someone from Northwest Catholic, Northwest Catholic if you felt like they uh, they might have someone there who'd want to join in as well. So that would be three people. But then we'll. So, because then, how are we going to decide? I, that's what I, I guess I'm asking you. What, what you, what would I put in an email? How do you guys want to approach this? Um, I, th I think for now, let's let's confine ourselves to the Hall and Connard because I, I just don't know. I know Northwest Catholic. I, I don't know what other schools. I, I don't know the non-public um, landscape, and and so I don't know who we'd would be if it was just northwest catholic i'd say yeah let's go for one from each but i suspect um K 
KO or yeah, KO, yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna have I mean, are you gonna put some action in there for these representatives or is it like meaning are are we gonna expect them to take an action? Or is it you know they're gonna come sit at a meeting and then they'll take on a task that we assign to them? I'm just curious, in the draft are you gonna give them something that they're gonna say yes, I'll sign up for that? Or are we asking them to come to a meeting and then to sign up for a task? I think it's a good point you're raising, James. I, from my perspective, literally they would be youth representatives. So they, to the extent that I'm 67 years old and don't really remember, you know, the how it looks to a to a younger person, I think they bring a point of view. So that would be one of their charges to, to say from where we sit, you know, whether it's Greta Thunberg or or something else, um, we see it this way, and I. I think for all of us, uh, if if there's you know some of the social media stuff would, I think they would they could be very helpful to us and also so I would try to find things for them to do. Uh, they obviously don't have to do it in the same way that none of you have to do anything. You're here because you you want to be. Um, I don't know if that hurts or helps, but I would I would. No, it makes sense. I was just trying to get an understanding of maybe like when you're putting it out there, I'm thinking from a young person's perspective as, okay, we, you know, do join this and it's put out to the high school and they want someone to come in. I might be asking, well, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Right. So I think we say we want you to meet a charming group of people once a month. <laughs> <laughs> Check out yes. everybody's basements and family rooms. And yeah. yeah, I'll incorporate that. I agree with Bernie. I think they would function just like a regular commissioner. So participate in discussion. And you know, if if we're doing it like this, assigning tasks and kind of working through things, hopefully there's something on this list that might take their fancy and, and they could work on it too jointly with just like we've got two or three people assigned to different things. So I'll try and put that in an email. Um, yeah, I was I was just having trouble figuring out, you know, I, I, I too agree that I think we should for now in this um, temporary phase, keep it contained to the, the two high schools. Otherwise um, we're opening our, ourselves up to many more schools or avenues. How do we get people in? How do we choose? How many do we want? Um, so I, I, I'm a, agreement with that and it looks like uh david mellow has joined so hi there am i david? in you are hi dave hello yeah. there i tried joining uh, another way and it didn't work out i've been listening on the um on the youtube then i just tried something different here wonderful Great. welcome aboard um Scooting, scooting down one one bullet, heat pump and efficiency education campaign. Uh, that's Bernie and Joe. And here's where I am on that. We had we have run into difficulty before engaging with a specific pest contractor, solar contractor that the town is uh, justifiably concerned or wary about being perceived as endorsing any particular installer or a contractor. And I think to make this heat pump and efficiency education campaign work, I think we'd want to partner with somebody. So I am in the process um, of reaching out to, I think her name is Gina Verano, who I think is the assistant town counselor. Is that, is that the right term? Uh, she, we were on this path before the uh, pandemic hit. She understandably had to do a bunch of other stuff, but, uh, so my my hope is that we we can get something that the town will be comfortable with that it will be helpful to us. Catherine, you'd helped us before working with uh, Gav Garen Garen um, Garmin um, Rusum, I think, crafting some language that describes. So we're we're looking for some language that we can engage with a contractor, but make it clear that. That contractor is agree. We're not endorsing him in a commercial sense. He's here to help us with education and outreach. That's so. I'm, 
So I'm taking that one on. And Joe, I, I will rely on you to be a, a second set of eyes on that. Bernie, that's great. Garmin has left, so Gina is his replacement. And we actually just hired a new um, corporation counselor too, who started in October, I think, and I forget her name right now, um, but sh she um, is also um, uh, there ready for assistance too. And I've engaged her on a couple of other issues. So we can, we, I, I this is, for me, uh, an important step for us to get over this hurdle of partnering with people because every other town who implements successful energy efficiency and outreach campaigns has partnered with vendors. Um, and I just think West Hartford is 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 too conservative in this aspect if we're gonna get anything done. Um, you know, so I disclaimer language is fine, um, but we need to be able, we can't be be shackled by this. Um, otherwise, we're not going to make any progress. Yeah. I, I will say in, in Brantford, we were able to get over that hurdle. And it's it's very powerful. In fact, I, I don't know if West Hartford would want to go this route, but their first selectman is, a, is a, Jamie Cosgrove is his name. And he, he'll, he'll get together with, the, it would be the equivalent of uh, Mayor Cantor getting together with us and they'll make a, a video supporting, you know, here's here's test contractors. Why are we doing that in, in in this town? We're doing it because we want to be more efficient and more resilient, and we're trying to help our our community members save money and be more comfortable. So, it it it, it I think if we do it properly, uh, it's it's not dangerous to the town, and it, it would be good to the town. But yeah, it's but we got to get over that hurdle. <laughs> I think Sherry would absolutely make that video for you if you asked. That's good. I, um, energy outreach to LMI. I, I don't have anything to report. Uh, that's that's burning. Freeze up. Say again. Did I freeze up? No, you're 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 very oh, okay. Okay, my screen froze for a second. Okay, Max. I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. Um, it's probably catching you cold. Yeah, remind me what LMI is again. Max <laughs> is muted. That's the <laughs> low middle income. So we're one of the dimensions that we're trying, we're looking for is um, EEJ, Energy Equity and Justice, um, and part part of that is hopefully all of us have enough wherewithal that we have lights and heat. But there's a surprising number of our fellow town residents who don't and there are a lot of programs that are available to people who have to pay their utility bills so one avenue we could go is work with astrid calderon and social services and try to help those people access programs we could help them try to um, do energy efficiency so their bills are are lower but it's a it's a hard it, it, it's going to take a lot of effort, I think, to actually reach that, that community. So, okay. Uh, Samantha Dynowski is otherwise committed tonight, but I think we've been working all along with the Sierra Club Ready for 100. Uh, Samantha basically says at which time we get the clean energy plan adopted at the town council level we will be potentially the first community in connecticut to be ready for 100. Um, but others are, are moving right along so i'm not sure we'll be first uh, james the recollect that <laughs> you had, you have done car events in the past um in the midst of this pandemic, I, I, I don't know how we would do an EV car event, but some someday the pandemic will be over. So this this would be a good one um, for you to work work on. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Uh, the expectation with the pandemic might make this one a little bit difficult, but I'm ready. I, I could definitely put something on when when we're through this. I could look for the uh, you know any EV car manufacturers that are out there and put something on where we could 
you know, get some test drives out there, something exciting, get the buzz out there and, and get people to it. So I'm and glad to take that on. Yeah. One, one, of the, one of the things that I've, I've seen people do is re, rethink in pandemic terms, traditional campaigns. So obviously we don't want to get a bunch of people together and, and kill each other. Um, but there may be social media uh, messages that we could put together. On my Facebook page, I'm forever getting the top, the top best plug-in hybrids or uh, the, the, the latest uh, some, something. So, we, so there, may be, uh, there may be interviews that we could do with different car dealers around and just say, okay, um, Mitchell Subaru, what, what have you got? Uh, so there may be some virtual uh, equivalents that we could start working on even now. So pitch that back at you. Yeah, and I I would target. Oh, am I talking? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> when is so? There's a National Drive Electric Week in September. Correct? September? Yes. I think it's um, September. So. We, who knows what the uh, the environment will look like then? So, uh, you, you know, depending on how far out you want to plan, I I might suggest, like Bernie's saying, something more virtual or something repeatable. So, like, if if you do short videos with local car dealers about what offerings they have, you could go out and do all those videos and then show like one a day, you know, and make it into a campaign that we can blast out through sustainable West Hartford and the town channels and WeHa, and then just have people virtually log on and like look at the videos like one a day or or have a live webinar event or something like that. I um that's that's again kind of reinventing, re rethinking what a campaign or an event looks like. And and maybe it's just a series of of videos over the course of Drive Electric Week or something. Just one idea. Yeah, um, and one thing I'm I'm not as as um, adept at using WebEx, but it turns out the Zoom platform you can basically make if you record it, uh, you can make it. You can essentially make a movie. So if you find a, a person that you think other other residents would be interested in hearing from, it, it could be a car owner, it could be a car dealer, it could be somebody else. Um, we could get them on a Zoom session. You could interview them, and we could make a make a, a short movie. I, I, I think we can even match it up to a set of PowerPoint slides. Uh, that I know I've seen it done. I don't specifically know. How to do. <laughs> this might be another thing that youth representative could help with too. I mean, and that's the other thing. I don't even think you have to be an EV expert because you can go and say, "Hey, you know who wins." whoever at the Nissan dealership, I know nothing about EVs, you know, sell me one. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. And then another idea, you, you don't even have to create videos. I'm sure there are tons of educational EV videos out there. Just as long as we don't infringe copyrights, you could just, just don't reinvent the wheel, like find, just research and find a few good ones. Yeah. Actually, this this might be one of the few cases where we're actually trying to reinvent the wheels. That, that was a pun. <laughs> um, As part of Biden's initiative, he's. Yeah. Uh, I think he's. Uh, well, I think it's more than suggesting, but he, he's saying that the government's going to go uh, EV, totally EV. It's a it's a part of his stimulus also. I, the government's going to be buying EVs. I think once again, I think the federal government is going to have a fleet of EVs, and West Hartford will still be uh, <laughs> driving around with diesels. But <clears throat> uh, public transit champions, Catherine. I'm guessing that's one you haven't had a chance to get to. No, but I've I've confirmed over and over that it's a gap. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Actually, I, no, I'm sorry. I need to talk to Greater uh, Hartford Transit. Great. Um, the next 
several things, community, the next several bullets here, community engagement with sustainable etiquette, explore the sustainability plan, and the creation of a sustainability task force, kind of, I think, all kind of clumped together. And I, what I would like to do is just go out of order and just show, Catherine, you, you let us know that West Hartford uh, got another I don't think it's a, an award, but a recognition that countrywide out of 30 small cities, um, we are we are number six. And if I, I'm going to try to um, stop sharing. And I'm going to try to share. Um, can people see this? Can you see no. it? Uh, an AC no, getting bigger. Getting better. Getting better. <laughs> getting bigger. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Pretty good. There we are. So that's so. I mean, uh, uh, this is to me very, very impressive. First of all, you know, when you see the state California, 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 um, you, you you expect California to, you know, be on on the edge. Say for you, uh, you I was know. surprised by Coventry and yeah, yes, Joe, me too. You're quite a so, Connecticut town. So let me explain what this is. This is this is a uh, specific pilot project. So um, I volunteered the town of West Hartford, and um, there was space for six Connecticut towns in this initiative, which was we volunteered through sustainable connecticut the program oh, okay. um and um we were asked to fill out ac triple e's um scorecard um that they use for large cities they had modified it um to account for um this group of cities so this is the entire group this is not out of small cities nationwide this is a pilot project um, where cities have come together through organizations like Sustainable Connecticut, Sustainable Jersey. There's a group in in um, in Minnesota, um, and and we were asked to to pilot this new scorecard. Um, so um, some of this is reflective of who filled out the scorecard and how much information they could collect from their town at the time. So um, I know some of the other Connecticut towns had trouble getting some of the information to fill out the scorecard. I was able to talk with Todd Dume, so so we um, we missed a, a few things, um, but but we we did a pretty good job filling out the scorecard, which is I think helped our score. But the what so this is nice. The follow on to this is even more exciting is that now we are part of a network of sustainable states across the US, New Jersey, you can see Maryland, Minnesota, California. And um, we are participating in some uh, trainings led by ACEEE and the Great Plains Institute um, around three different tracks. The tracks are energy efficiency in buildings, climate action planning, and EV ready communities. And AC Triple E and GPI are holding the trainings. They're very action oriented, and and it's an opportunity for us to learn about these different things and and um, figure out concrete ways of moving forward and share ideas and information with with other cities across the the nation. So that's great. Um, I've attended an overview on the buildings track um, already. We had climate action planning today, which is actually kind of relevant to some of the tough stuff we've just talked about. And I can share some of that a little bit later. And EV ready communities is, is coming up. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So Catherine, you've, you've led us to the point where we expect a major award every month. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, so I, I wanted, in light of this, coming back to the the thing about the energy plan, and Max mentioned earlier that um, what he thinks Matt Hart wants is a um, sustainability plan. 
um, you know, and, and having had a conversation just today with some other towns and ACEEE about what a, you know, difference between an energy plan and a climate action plan and one that just focuses on mit mitigation and one that focuses on resiliency and things like that. I'm, I'm of the opinion that we need to talk to Matt about what he really wants. I, I do believe he wants something broader than an energy plan, um, but I'm not sure that he knows where he wants to draw the boundary in terms of mitigation versus resiliency, um, you know, versus waste versus <laughs> groundwater. <laughs> you know, I, 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 think, um, I think we have to have that discussion to help him make up his mind before we can go forward. But I, I do think he is interested um, in, in a greenhouse gas inventory and folding a little more into it. I think we just need to be clear about how much more. Right, and Catherine, if we go, I, I think you can see the PowerPoint deck here that, that got this chunk of the agenda there, but you, I think you finally, uh, we've got something called a sustainability task force. Is that right at this point? And um, so we, we do not yet. Um, Catherine Bruns and I met with um, Matt Hart um, and um, some other Clean Energy Commission members and affiliates like Bernie and, and Julia have been helping and Sam at night in the evenings um, fleshing out the idea. So we've got us to the point where um, we, we're gonna request that a sustainability task force is formed to assist the town in the preparation of the sustainable Connecticut application for the town this year. Our um, certification with Sustainable Connecticut expires. We're looking to go for silver certification, which is gonna be a lot of work. Um, this is also op an opportunity to get more people involved um, and engaged. Um, and I think, um, so this task force's primary task in, uh, initially, and the task force structure we, we kind of settled on is to, to have representatives from all relevant commissions, as well as new representatives that would be representative of West Hartford, there would be a youth representative. There would also be representatives to represent each of West Hartford's nine voting districts, eight, nine, nine. Nine, I think. And then, um, and then also um, ensure that those representatives represent West Hartford in terms of race and ethnicity, gender, et cetera. Um, there'd be up to 20 members. And again, the primary, um, role of this task force would be to assist in the preparation of West Hartford's um, Sustainable Connecticut application. And in doing that, I think they've got a lot of exposure to um, what's going on in the town, get them engaged, help with community outreach. So Joe, um, you know, more bodies means <laughs> more, more, more um, outreach and more networks, personal networks. Uh, and then, um, and then also, I think as a secondary task, um, Matt would be interesting at, in having some extra input into um, where there are there were gaps in in our sustainability kind of um, coverage, and um, you know, and what existing commissions are doing and and where there are gaps. So I think this task force um, could also maybe shed, give some input onto that. So that idea is being presented tomorrow morning um, at the Public Works and Facilities Subcommittee of the Town Council, and we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, so I think this is pretty, pretty ingenious. I mean, we're pulling together a task force with a specific purpose, namely to broader community engagement with sustainable CT. But once that body is created, we can hopefully turn it to also help explore the sustainability plan and um, and potentially sort of 
get identify gaps between us and the different other commissions and ultimately harness us together in some fashion or another to create a sustainability plan. So I think it's I think it's ingenious and will be helpful to what we're trying to do. Um, oh, great. Um, I don't think we do you have, guys have any question. I have a little you, you knocked my bullet. My knocked my number. You knocked me off. I, I had a staff report on there somewhere on gone, the agenda. Gone. Okay, well, <laughs> as a I'm member gone. of the public, go ahead and give you. Yes, you you are correct. I knocked you off. I apologize. Is is Catherine? Catherine, did you want to add, add anything on the sustainability task force? Or are you good? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Well, just a little staff report. So, Cat, the other thing Catherine and I have been working on is as um, rebuilding a West Hartford public schools network um, is going to be a little challenging and it'll be virtual to start, um, but we've been um, working with Leanne Nolan, um, a science teacher at Hall High School, and trying to identify some other people to come together. Um, I think that Leanne's focus right now is kind of curriculum and garden-based. And Catherine and I are also helping to push some of our um, education outreach on energy efficiency and recycling. Um, but I think it'll be a great way to share ideas and support each other. So hopefully in the next few months, um, we'll start up some virtual meetings. So if you guys know any teachers at any of the West Hartford public schools, we have a bit, we have kind of point people identified at about half of the schools. Um, but if you know anyone, a teacher, um, who would be ideal for this kind of group, please let us know. And Catherine, a question regarding uh, diversion of food scrap from uh, school kitchens and cafeterias. Obviously, students are not eating in the cafeterias at this point, but um, I guess at least probably some of the schools have kitchens that are preparing meals. Is the food scrap still being diverted kind of from the back of the house in the places where um, food is coming in to be processed and packaged? Yeah, all of the schools are still doing the organics uh, separation to the best that they can, no yeah. matter what each kitchen is doing. So it's not happening in cafeterias, but it's happening in the kitchens, and Haynes is still doing a regular pickup. It's not as often, but I went through the cafeterias and encouraged the janitors to keep up that program because it was so hard to get it started. And I said, you know, even if you can just do what you have, just to keep that behavior going, I yeah, thought it yeah. would be helpful. So yeah, it's still going on. And I would imagine the stuff coming out of the back of the kitchen is pretty clean compared to, you know, maybe trying to get the students to sort things out properly. Very much so. I haven't been since, um, I think, October, but I went through and looked in the bins and it was very different than when yeah. it's happening in the cafeteria. Great, thank you. Hey, real quick, Catherine, what did you, uh, Catherine Tavinia, CD. What, what did you call the stack report? You said um, right at the beginning when you were talking about it, you, you named it something. Uh, what did you name that? Uh, oh. The program where you were saying oh, that you I just called it education to, upgrade to return. To, I just called it sustainable West Harp W. What did I say? We're trying to recreate the, the schools, the schools. A West Hartford Public Schools Sustainability Network. No, I think okay. it was uh, Sustainable West Hartford Public Schools. Yeah. Sustainable WHPS. Sustainable West Hartford Public Schools. Yeah. I, it's not an official name right now, but. Okay. Um, I thought there um, was one, so I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, there's not an official name right now. I think um, once we hold our first meeting, maybe we'll come up with it. But I, I've been calling it sustainable, just like sustainable West Hartford, <laughs> sustainable West Hartford public schools for now. Um, Bernie, can I share my screen? I have some utility summaries that, oh, that I wanted to share. Yep, I, I don't know that I, I think you can just go ahead and see if you can share. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it? Perfect. Okay. Ooh, let's move you over. Okay. So I just I have two summaries. 
one for the Board of Ed and one for the town. This is because I've just been doing budget stuff. Um, so uh, this is our 16 public schools. Um, their electricity, natural gas, and water consumption for the last few fiscal years. You can see the huge drop off. And just to let you know, um, if we took this data backwards, mm -hmm. um, even a few years, this number would be over 11 million kWh. So you can obviously, and then we have some charts, you can obviously see the impact that COVID has had. We're down at 8 million kWh. Um, and this has some of my budget projections. What's pretty cool is the, the charts. Uh, you can really see with the orange line uh, for fiscal year 20, the drop off starting in March when the pandemic hit on the, um, on the usage in the school buildings. Um, at, especially on the electric side, you can see that natural gas was not affected as much. Um, because obviously when COVID hit in March, uh, we were pretty much out of heating season. Uh, what is very interesting to me, um, you will also see, sorry, uh, back to we're still on natural gas. Um, the gray line is this year. Um, and so what I find pretty interesting is that we're, we haven't, a lot of people thought energy use was going to skyrocket because of all the ventilation um, requirements for COVID. But you can see both in our electricity and our natural gas lines that we've been able to maintain um, kind of at normal use levels or even below. So I think that's, again, I've said in the past, it's kind of a combination of things. Our buildings are still at reduced occupancy and they are not operating um, as many after hours and weekend uses hours as they used to. Um, but we've also done quite a lot of uh, maintenance and we did a huge uh, commissioning ventilation project with the schools too, which I think, I think has really dramatically improved our energy use and fixed a lot of broken things. And I think um, when we get back, we, we're running, literally running our buildings um, almost 24 seven in terms of uh, fans and exhaust fans and things like that. So I think when we clamp those schedules back down, um, we will really see the benefit of all that maintenance work we've done. One interesting thing. One question, <laughs> Catherine. Yeah. So in, in the pandemic, I, I hear you saying we want more ventilation so that yeah. the bad air goes out and the good air comes in. Do we have anything like an energy recovery um, aspect in an air exchanger where some of the heat can be saved or is it just too big uh, an application for an energy recovery? Uh, talking about the outside that? air being, you know, heated, preheated before it's yeah conditioned. Yeah, as we so said, we at at some schools we do have that. At some schools we don't. Okay. Yeah, it just yeah, depends Morley, on just the, the windows open. Morley's got the windows open. Yeah, Charter <laughs> Hope had the windows open, and who was it who sent me a photograph of that? They won't was tomorrow. That Huh? They won't tomorrow. Oh, so one of you guys sent me a photograph. Who was that? It was awesome. Well, the school knows they'll they'll keep the windows shut over the weekends now. <laughs> well, it's been um, pretty warm. Yes. Relative. What I find surprising is this water chart. <laughs> so, uh. That's irrigation there in the summer. Uh, and the gray line is this year. Uh, so we're going to be focusing a little bit on, uh, it was a very, very, very dry <laughs> fall. Um, but that is a, a lot of water and a lot of money right there. So um, that's going to be one area that we're, we're dipping into is looking at that, that water um, line um, and MDC rates, as I'm sure you guys all know, because you get bills at home, um, don't ever seem to go down. <laughs> Catherine, is this for like watering the grounds at, say, Town Hall, but also 
uh, this, let's say Rockledge Golf Course or? So this, as I mentioned, is the Board of Education. Oh, Board of Ed, okay. So the drivers behind this is Connard and Hall Fields. Okay. It's really primarily only the high schools um, that have a lot of irrigation. So to your point, um, we'll flip over here to the town summary. Now this is the only yeah. thing that's not in this summary um, and that's just because it's it's not in this I, this is a, a budget document that I'm sharing with you and so um, the there are a couple of buildings which are not in the town utility fund just for budgeting purposes cornerstone and some of the um, leisure services social services operated buildings like the art fund the Noah Webster house um, Sarah Whitman Hooker House and uh, Hannock House are not in this town fund. So, so there's about there's a there's a small piece that's missing from this summary. Cornerstone being the biggest one. Again, you can see the the drop off. Um, some of that street lights and traffic lights are in here. So some of this big drop um, is. Um, Street and traffic lights. Uh, but here, you can see on this as well, the impact of, of COVID here was not as great. That's, again, because a lot of the town stuff was not as greatly affected. Um, buildings like the police department, all the firehouses, the street and traffic lights, obviously were not impacted by COVID at all. They were still open and running, um, sometimes more than usual public works um, facilities you know, that kind of things, um, they did not shut down. So you'll see that the, but again, we're still below where we used to be, um, partly COVID. A lot of it is energy conservation work that we've done over the time. Uh, and then Chris, getting down to you. So this is where you will see Rockledge and all the, the fields and all the um, soccer fields and the town um, irrigation. Um, you know, for flower beds and town hall, um, that is in here. Um, again, you can see a little spike, the gray line um, in the fall this year. Um, and and she's still like, expect. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say for like the, the sports fields at King Philip Middle School, which which chart would that be on? Would that be Board of Education or this one? Uh, they're in Board of Education. Yeah. Okay. So I'll note we uh, I was coaching a youth team this fall and i would say into october we'd be on the field on a weeknight and the sprinklers were still going off fields were not really dry um but it seemed like they were just on auto whatever some kind of auto schedule and they would go on while we were out there practicing so it seems like maybe a little bit more uh oversight uh could be used for for a how long into the season the sprinklers are going and um you know i've had people comment to me before like how come I'm driving down the street in a, a rainstorm and I see sprinklers on at town yeah. properties? So you know, these are just some anecdotal uh, things I've heard from people over the years. Um, awesome. Yeah. So, you know, maybe there's some water saving potential there. My, my suggestion yeah. is, is to look at, Bob should look at um, putting a well at each high school and convert. Yeah, we've... We've talked about, we talked about, so Rockledge um, and Buena Vista use the water out of the ponds. It's recirculated. Um, the water that comes from MDC is, um, does not get any breaks or submetered when it's um, used right. for irrigation. Right. So you're paying both all the fees associated with the, the clean water project as well as 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 your normal water charges right. um so it is doubly expensive no yes. i thought um, about sinking a well on my property there's okay. actually someone around the corner has and they yeah. use it for irrigation you know yeah this is so, so yeah we're we're gonna dive into this but the the tricky part of it is that um this is not all under plant and facilities um, a lot of the grounds work is is done in public works. Um, so so um, we'll have to 
we'll have to tread lightly at first. You know, I've, I've, we've approached grounds people before, um, but to have your anecdotal stories and, and um, you know, to, to show them this data um, and, um, you know, when it, when it gets us, <laughs> when it gets us as, as big as this and the dollars are starting to, to mount up, that's when the, the West Hartford Public Schools finance director starts to notice it too. <laughs> right. So that, that's a good point actually that Chris brought up earlier because that, I've seen that before too where it's raining and yeah. you have sprinklers on. But I, also I would have expected water to drop a little bit more because I, I've noticed this when I've gone to fields and I forget, I think it's Hall High School, they have a turf field, you know, on the, on the football field, um, soccer plays on it also. I would expect, I know there's still the, the grass fields that are out there, but I would expect with some additions of turf being more and more common around some of the, the areas that water usage would be down because of the maintenance. Yeah. Well, overall, it has come down. Um, but um, it, it, it varies widely, let's just say. The, the trends are not as predictable. I, I think um, it has come down, but not as much as it, it could be. I, I think there's a lot of, of room for improvement on the water side. There, it has been kind of drought like and yeah. um, and I know that um, uh, Helen um, believes that you know watering and keeping the, the soil irrigated is is an important aspect to keeping the fields in good condition. Um, as opposed to, you know, fertilizing, over fertilizing. That kind of thing, so. Yeah, and I, I don't pretend to know all the intricacies of, of grounds maintenance, um, which is another reason, you know, I can show them the data, but we're, we're going to have to work cooperatively. Um, I do hear from the grounds people that, um, you know, moving to organics, actually organics, um, take more watering um, than than regular um, pesticides. Water. Yeah. Sounds great. Anyway, so I just thought I just thought I'd share some of that. Um, and um, you know, uh, the good news is is too that you know, even though we're uh, that I, I've um, sort of laid out a budget that's 6% lower than last year, kind of both on the town and Board of Ed, I think was even a little bit more, but the, it'll be 6% lower. Um, and that's even predicting kind of a, a return to, to normal operation. Great. Catherine, so while we're on this, on this uh, topic, uh, I don't know if you know Melissa Copps. She's uh, associated with the Connecticut Green Building Council. She's a, an architect by trade, but she is there. They have a, a, a summit, I think, in March, and they're looking to interview municipal folks who have done a lot with their building portfolio just to have short snippets. So um, I'm, I'm going to try to hook you up with her and Think, think three minute three minute video describing to the world sort of what you how you've made this all happen. Uh, that's sort of the thing. That's nothing nothing fancy. Oh, and before we get off the topic, so I showed you those summaries. I'm not going to put them back on the screen. Um, but the bottom line was in in fiscal year 20, the town's electric use was about 15 million kilowatt hours, slightly over total municipal operations um, and we recently we are literally just finalizing the purchase but we um, we decided to offset um, that municipal electricity use a hundred percent this year um, and so we we made a, a rec officially um, which means that we made a rec purchase 
um, green E certified rec purchase um, for 15 million kilowatt hours so that we can make an official claim that our municipal electric use is 100% renewable. Um, now that is a rec purchase and I know some people, Sam who's not here, but some people <laughs> are not excited about recs, um, but that's a way we can officially claim to put our money where our mouth is um, and lead by example in terms of a renewable energy um, goal. But that's in addition to all the, the things that we do that we cannot claim to support you know, local um, solar and renewable energy development. Um, and on that regard, I just wanted to let you know that the solar array on King Philip, which is a 500 27 kW array um, went operational December 11th, I think it is. Um, so that's generating and will generate about 600,000 kilowatt hours a year. And Catherine, for that, we're using the, the power but selling the RECs from those systems? Yes, all of our power purchase agreements, um, we do not own the RECs for. Um, Eversource, purchases the RECs as part of the ZREC auction process. Okay. Um, that's how that ZREC program works. Um, all of the systems that we put in with the Clean Energy Community Grants, the RECs were taken as part of the grant process. Uh, yeah, so anybody who gets incentives, <laughs> your RECs <laughs> went with that incentive. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so so the official claim has for now has to be for, through a REC purchase. Right. Has there ever been any <clears throat> um, discussion of getting offsets for fuel usage? There has not. That can be an item for the future, Max. Yeah, uh, I'd love to because that, I agree with you, is going to be the, the tough nut to crack, right? Electricity <laughs> use is easy. Um, but the the rest of it, the natural gas and the other fuel use is, is going to be the, the harder. Yeah, I'd love to know more about it. I don't, that's an area that I'm not as familiar with. Part of a middle ground there is, to, I, I believe that our fleet manager in West Hartford is thinking about plug-in hybrids for the town fleet, for private passenger cars. A couple. Yeah, it can be great to start. So I'm also going to be working on a, a grant for um, for two EVs for plant and facilities. Um, I, Public Works was still back on hybrids, and Bob and I just decided to, to skip it. <laughs> so we're, we're going on our own. <laughs> we may or may not get the money. Um, that we, it's, it's a grant through um, CROG. Um, but we'll we'll try. Thanks. I also we, have, we have a, we own a couple of older vehicles um, that our staff use. Um, so rather rather than waiting for the the vehicle pool to catch up, we decided maybe we could give it a little jump start. I think it's I think it may be Fairfield that has a Tesla police car. I thought it was pre. Oh, a Tesla. What does Patrice have? She has something else. Oh, it's 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 the Westport police that are adding a Tesla to the fleet of cruisers. So I, th I think we, we should keep up with Westport, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to paint our plant and facilities vehicle with like nice bright colors and advertise that it's an EV and that it'll drive around. Yeah, that's my goal. That's part of why I'm going to get the grant. Any traction <laughs> on the buses? Uh, not that I've heard. No. I haven't really had time um, to follow up on that. Um, I was hoping someone would um, get energized by by seeing one, but I think it's it still needs to be pushed. Right. One thing we really, I'm sure we'll all be on the lookout for is as as the Biden administration. You know, gets through this executive order phase and actually starts to incent 
incenting things and creating programs. I, we should be ready to, um, you know, take their help, I guess is what I'm saying. And so I, I imagine on several of these fronts, there's going to be help of all sorts, money included for these programs. So, so be ready. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I think this is a, it was a great meeting. Uh, the uh, the commissioner, um, uh, so, so the projects that we've sort of assigned to ourselves will that'll be a standing agenda item. So Joe, your your en endless uh, foray into public relations uh, yeah. is not over. Um, any, anything else that we can you would recommend that we add next time? And, Obviously, when, when you see something, um, as, as they like to say, when you see something, say something. So if you have ideas for the agenda, by all means, feed it to our new secretary, James. And uh, OK, I have to say, this is really exciting. I have a good feeling about this year. I would say just ask for next um, next meeting agenda. Can you add? number three or whatever it was with staff report back in please yes sorry catherine that's okay it was a power play on my part I'm trying to... <laughs> okay there's there's a little time before it's nine o'clock so thank you very much and um have a good night thanks thank you bernie thank you nice basement you have there Thank <laughs> you.